Hey y'all, Jessie Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I love teaching art journaling and I have a really fun project for you today. But first, I just wanna take a moment where we can like just settle into what we're about to do. Sometimes I just rush into things and I forget like this is something that I enjoy doing and that um, we can just kind of slow down a little bit. So I just want you to take a deep breath. Might feel weird, but we're doing it. <laughs> and um, recognize this, maybe this is your, your self-care time. This is your me time and like, you know, enjoy it. Um, and tell your, I think it's important to like say like I'm an artist like I think a lot of people are a little scared to jump into art journaling or a little nervous because it's called art journaling and um, it feels like you have to be an artist to be doing art journaling and then your brain goes through this whole list of things like well I don't know if I'm an artist artist because like an artist has like stuff in a gallery or whatever no. when you're making art you are an artist so I just want to take a moment for us to kind of think about that before we get started okay so we're gonna do this really fun swan project um, and I'm excited to share this technique with you. I think it'll be something that you can do in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, so let's go over the supplies and then we'll go over the steps. So some supplies, if you are a subscriber at Let's Make Art, you can, um, you'll have what you need. But if you're following along, you can gather some similar supply supplies and um, um, have a, a similar result. So we're gonna be using some gesso and that's how we're going to build up this texture right here in the moon, which I'm really excited about. It looks really fun. Thanks. And we're going to use this Dr. P.H. Martin iridescent calligraphy color in silver. That's a long name, but it's good. <laughs> and that's how we're going to get this little shimmer. And oh, I forgot to mention, Keenan is um, running camera. Yes. And he's always talking with us. Just and that's in the fun. background. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to use this blush paint. Um, it's not pink, it's blush. Blush. <laughs> Um, uh, for our background here and then we're going to use some collage paper that I have and if you have um, collage paper that you want to use that's great we're going to use yes paste to glow it down which we love here and um, we want to have a uh, forgot what it's called palette knife and you might want to experiment with different sizes to get different textures or whatever but um, you can you can use that however you want. I'm going to use a round eight brush just for painting and an exacto to cut this out. So our steps are going to be, um, first we're going to cut this wand just so we can kind of use it as a way to gauge our composition. And we'll go ahead and cut this stuff out and have it ready. And then we'll do our gesso texture and then we'll do our paint and then we'll glue our elements on last. Okay, so I think that's all of our things. Now we can get started on our projects. So going to set this aside over here. I'm going to grab my little mini journal and I'm just going to do this in on this side of my page today. There's still my clips that I have to hold my paper down right here. Now this one I did on the other side bled a little bit. This paper is a little bit different than the other art journal we're using but it's no big deal because we're going to use acrylic paint and cover that right up. So if that happened to you don't worry. It's not a problem. Okay, so we got our page prepped and ready. Now I'm gonna grab my cutting board because we're gonna cut this one with my X-Acto knife here. Now we've already, cut, we've already done a few projects and I've cut out my wolf and my bear out of my paper here. And now I'm gonna do this one. Okay, but I'm gonna start with a new blade because I use this blade a lot after a few projects. And you'll see, I kind of broke that tip off a little bit and it's dull. So I'm gonna take this out. I felt like you just changed that last time we filmed. I did, but then I did a lot of art in between that. Holy shnikes. I do a lot of art. That's awesome. A lot of fun. I'm just gonna put this used one in there because it's the only one I have right now and then I'll remember to throw it away. So, just so it's not hanging out here. Okay, so that is nice and secure. And um, if you'd like this knife, it is available on our website. Oh, so are those uh, palette knives. Oh, yeah. We have a pack of those on our yeah. website as well. I think most of these items are available. Well, that's true. Okay. Um, is this a good spot right here if I cut? It's a great spot. Okay. Now, you could do this with scissors if you don't want to get too detailed on your cutting, it's up to you. It's whatever preference you have. 
I just love swans. Oh, I forgot to talk about our prompts and why we're doing this. So as soon as I get done cutting this, well, then we'll jump back and talk about our prompt because part of the supplies that you're gonna need include some collage paper and um, we're using the journal prompts. So I like to um, teach a technique and use a prompt every time. Now there's a little bit of negative space where the wings of this swan kind of show through. And I think it's kind of fun to have that in there. That will, it would be a little tricky with scissors. So if you're not comfortable exacto, it's really not a big deal. You don't need to cut that out. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here, might as well do it. It would be tricky with scissors. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how you would do that. And if cutting with X-Acto is, um, is tough, don't worry. I've been doing this for a while. I've got a little practice. But with practice, you get better. Watch your head. Oh, yeah. I moved it down, didn't I? It's all right. Thank you. Have you ever seen a swan in real life? I think so. I feel like, not, I don't know about in the real world, real life, but the zoo for sure. Cool. Maybe. I just think they're so pretty. I've seen Swan Princess. <laughs> My kids like those Disney shorts. Um, oh, I do too. And they love the Ugly Duckling, especially my youngest daughter, who is one and a half. Okay. So if it doesn't quite let go, it means I just missed a spot. I missed this cute little spot right here. I would have to work on my patience to cut these out. Yeah? Yes. Because if, if I missed a tiny spot, I would just pull on it until it ripped out. Yeah, that, I'm glad that you said that because, yeah, if you do pull on it, then it might rip. It might be a little sad. Okay, so I got my swan here. And nice. one thing that I didn't mention in the supplies, what might be handy, is a ruler um, to cut out our or animal words. Now I just gathered a few words that I have seen other people describe the characteristics of these animals. I don't know if they're like super accurate or just based on opinion, but I thought it was fun. So I included them in this collage paper that I designed. And you can just have fun with it. I'm gonna turn this that way. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm just gonna cut. I'm not being fussy with this. I'm not being precious. I'm just going to cut it. It'll be what it is, right? It's going to be perfect. It's going to be just the way we like it. <laughs> so some of these characteristics, and I think I'm going to just leave off swan because I like how it looks without it. But you can use that too if you want. This is over here. So <clears throat> then I'm just going to, I'm not going to use the ruler. I'm just going to cut in between these words. Messenger of faith. New ways of thinking, inner grace. And I might trim those up a little bit more depending on how I'm feeling in just a minute. Okay, now let me jump back to the prompt cards because we skipped that part. Um, so yeah, we're going to do this technique, which we have the steps here, and then um, that technique card and this prompt card. So this prompt card is all about a kindred connection. Um, and, and it asks the question, is there an animal that has a continuous presence in your life? Um, maybe it appears in your dreams or often crosses your path in nature. Perhaps it's trying to softly bring something to your attention. Try researching the characteristics of this kindred spirit and journaling about what you find. If you discover a connection, include it in your art journal. So I have a connection with a swan and I will explain that. Um, but just be thinking like, is is there an animal that you just keep seeing over and over again? Maybe there's something to that because the other animals that I shared, um, you know, the one was a characteristic that I wanted to have like more of in my life, you know, when I chose the bear and the wolf was one that I kind of identify with because it's like magical and cool and I like the idea of it. And fierce. Yes, and fierce. Um, but the swan is one that kind of came to me um, instead of me being like, I want that, you know. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but that, that's the gist behind the prompt or whatever. Okay, now we have our things cut out. We are going to, 
Oh, there's, I'm like, where are my journal calls? Right in front of me. All right. Um, let's see. We are going to need something that's circular, and you can honestly use your gesso pot, which is the perfect size for that, for this journal. So I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to need a pencil. <laughs> Forgot about that in the supplies. That's all right. That looks like a good spot. Just a rough circle. There you go. Okay, and the next part is the fun part. It's the gesso. My nickname in college was Gesso when I was in art school because, you know, my name is Jesse. It is. <laughs> it, my name is Jesse. Your name's you know, Jesse. Did you forget my name? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Okay. So we got a rough circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. I was not diligent in cleaning my Gesso when I closed it. I can't get it open. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I got another one. But, yeah. You want to toss me that one? Nice I'll work tip. on it. Oh my gosh, did I do it to both of them? Here you go, Keenan. Keenan's the best. Not only is he the art cheerleader, but he's really good at opening stuff that I didn't clean. I got it. Yes, thanks. I don't think he should throw it back to me though. <laughs> that might be a mess. Should I hand it to you? <laughs> Come on over here, say hi, Keenan. Uh... <laughs> thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Wait, okay, I got it. <laughs> I like, what just happened? All right. Okay, so gesso is like a little thicker than paint and it's used for um, kind of protecting a surface in order for you to paint on it. it. Kind of gives it more strength, if you will. But this, we're just gonna use it to build up texture. So first, I just wanna get some gesso in my circle here. And if you get out of the circle a little bit, I mean, it's no big deal. Do you wanna push that up a little bit, please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try and be more polite next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. I didn't even. It was a little demanding. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't feel like that at all. I'm just glad that you're here telling me so that they can see. Because I'd be sad if I went <laughs> through this, this whole thing. This would be very difficult like, uh, to figure out uh, to do solo. <laughs> yeah, I know there's some people who do that, and I have a lot of respect for that. I also just like having someone on set to chat with, you know, That's it's true, fun. it's nice. All right, however you want to get this on here. I'm doing it crazy because I just want you to feel like you can do it. Plus, I'm just crazy, that's what I do. So I'm gonna turn this so I can work on it easier. That's what I needed to do. I was there feeling limited. Go. Nice, you'll rotate. Yeah. Pro going... tip, rotate the book. Yes. The journal. So it works with your arm angle, you know, whatever you're feeling comfortable with. Now this, this is not looking like that moon yet, is it? No. Not yet. It's gonna. I now like the, it though. The key to this is like allowing your gesso to dry a little bit as you're working with it. And then it gets a little stickier. Kind of like when we did the technique for the bear when we wanted to scrape in it, it had to be a little sticky. This is the same situation. Okay, now we have all of these lines kind of coming out like this. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm using this smaller um, palette knife to get that. If you want bigger ones, you can use a bigger one. If you got something else in your house you wanna get crazy with, I mean, you could try textures with a fork even. I mean, it could be really cool. That'd be neat, actually. So, yeah, so don't be limited by the supplies that you have on hand. You can still get creative. I never want people to feel like they have to do the exact same thing I did. I just want them to get excited about making some. What if you put string down? Ooh. On the outside of this pencil mark with tape. And then you put the gesso down and then you pull the string up. That Ooh. sounds cool. Like yeah. I might want to, you need to try that. I should probably try that. Cause that sounds really interesting. Okay, I'm turning it so I can get, just get an, and I'm gonna take this little clip off that's not my way for a minute. So I'm just gonna keep building this texture. I probably could just wait until it's a little dry and be more, it would do more of what I want it to do, but I've never been that girl that can wait, so I'm just gonna play in it until it starts doing that thing that I want it to do. Now it's doing it. See that? Yeah, that's cool. And I kinda like the idea of some of it coming off the out of the circle. That's kinda cool. 
Will you bring your noggin to the... There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Doesn't help when I keep rotating the thing. I don't know if help is the right word. <laughs> no, it looks great. It looks great. Ooh, that's a good one. It's like a good thick Oh, yeah, nice. One. Now, what I'm going to start to do now that I've got these outer sort of, I don't know, it's almost like flower petals, is start to get little textures coming from, I don't know how to explain this. So I've got this outer one. Now I'm coming in a little bit more in order to get that next layer. Does that make sense? Keenan, I'm not saying I, this very well. I think so. Try again. Okay, can't, so can't now we've got, again. we got that outer layer of that texture and then I went back in the middle and started pulling it towards the center. Yeah. So you get, you get, you get, you get it? Are they gonna get it? They're, they're gonna they're get so it. They're so smart, they know. Okay, so now I'm just doing that inner circle. The inner, inner part. Just bringing that in like that. And now we've got that texture. Nice. I know I'm excited when I start singing about it. <laughs> okay, rinse my palette knife in there. Okay, so this is the hardest part, is waiting for it to dry. <laughs> Ugh. Patience. Yeah, and this takes a little bit of time to dry. You could speed it up with a heat gun or a blow dryer, but um, if you don't have those and you're really excited about working on this, just go do something else. Because if you mess with this while it's wet, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so, this is the hard part. Go get a snack. Yes, snack break. Or do a little dance move or go organize or clean something and come back. And we will be right back after this is dry. Okay, it's almost, it's pretty much dry, but I know that this takes a while to dry. And I just wanna give you some tips on how to know if it's dry enough. So even if you use like a, a blow dryer or something like that to dry it, it will dry the outside of it first and then the inside. So if it looks dry, and you barely touch it, it might still like mess with the texture underneath. So just give it a long time to dry. I put the book in an easy bake oven <laughs> and I waited 16 hours. And it <laughs> he didn't actually do that, but it felt like that because it was a really long time to dry. So I'm just letting you know that's a thing. And because we're here painting together, I figured I could tell you a little story while you're waiting for yours to dry um, about swans and why they're significant to me. And um, so yeah, swans remind me of my Nana. Um, when I was little, she embroidered me, embroidered? I'm having a hard time embroidered. saying Embroidered. Yes, what he said. Um, uh, a pillowcase with a swan on it, and it was kind of um, an older pattern, but it was just really sweet, and so that was on my bed when I was a kid because my grandma made it for me. And she lived in Massachusetts and would come and visit us in the South, and when she um, flew on an airplane, which I was always like, wow, it's so cool, um, she always was dressed really nicely, very polished, smelling like Charlie perfume, and I just thought she came from another world. I mean, she was just like, like, you know, Mary Poppins or something, but she was my Nana. I love Mary Poppins. Ugh, just love her and loved when she visited. And um, I was so excited when I was seven, I got to go and spend a summer with her in Massachusetts. And we were in the Boston Gardens, and I was very much looking forward to going to ride the swan boats. And it was later in the day, probably because I'm a kid and I was dragging on, we didn't quite make it in time to buy a ticket and the last boat ride happened and I didn't get to get on the swan boats and I was super sad. Dang. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, my sister-in-law decided to plan a trip to Boston because we wanted to do all the things down there and do a historical tours and whatnot. And I, I mentioned the swan boats, but I kind of felt silly because I was like, this is a little kid thing, right? Like, um, <clears throat> anyway, it was the afternoon, late afternoon, we found ourselves in the Boston Gardens and it was like the same time of day and I was like, I wonder if we can, I wonder if we can go ride the swan boats, but I'm thinking it's probably too late, darn it. Um, so um, I'm gonna grab my phone because I have a picture and we'll, we'll show this picture like where you can see it. But um, we got to the um, place where they sell the tickets and they said, this is the last boat ride. And so you can see in this picture, I'm holding my little swan boat ticket and I got to make it on the swan boat and I was so excited. Uh. And it was just like this childhood wish fulfilled as a grown up. 
and um, I rode the swan boats with my sister-in-laws and I was just like, man, I gotta take pictures. Cause in the garden, there are swans in the pond and they have these little stories about ducks and the swans and all this like in Boston or whatever. And I saw this beautiful swan swimming next to us. And I was just thinking like, I made it. I made it on the swan boat, Nana. Like just imagining like her, like, you know, or whatever. And I go to take a picture of this swan and all of a sudden the clouds like parted. There was this light that just shone right on that swan. And I couldn't believe it. I took a picture and I have that picture and you can see it now. Um, just so cool. I just couldn't help but think like, Nana knows I made it, like we're here. And so when I talk about this um, and when I was thinking about this prompt, this is kind of what I was thinking. Like sometimes animals can um, be a reminder of something um, and it will come up in our life, whether it's in a dream or whether it's you know, it reminds us of somebody and we have a fond connection or memory to it. And um, it took me a while before I really had a solid connection with this one. Like I always liked it because it was on my pillowcase. And then, you know, I really got excited when I got to actually ride the swan boat and um, have that little connection with that swan that made me feel closer to my Nana. So it could be something like that. It could be something different, but it's just kind of neat to be more aware. So the other animals was, like I said, things I picked and I think the, the swan kind of picked me in that way. Yeah. Does that make sense? That is so great. <laughs> Gosh, that's nice. Okay, so maybe, maybe this is dry for you when we can get to the next step. Okay, so first I'm going to, yeah, that's looking good. I'm gonna do the silver. Actually, let's do the pink. Just give that a little bit more drying time for you. Blush. I mean blush, it's blush. My colors are blush and bashful. So I'll dispense a little paint here. Got my number eight round brush. And we're just gonna paint around this shape. And I want it to be a little watered down just so it's kind of see through a little bit. And you don't need to be like super, I wasn't super careful in making my circle, so I'm not being super careful about getting this around there. But if you like that and you want a perfect circle, then you do that, you do what you like to do. Sorry, let me get this up there where you can see it. Do you want to bring that down a little bit? Oh, was it too far? And then move your head back a little bit as well? Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I'm moving it again. Sorry, because of, <laughs> Oh. Get crazy here. So I'm just going to do um, a little sort of Rectangular, or rectangular. I'm having a hard time talking today, y'all. That's all right. Words are, words are, are they really useful? <laughs> okay, just a loose little rectangle is what I'm going for here. So we'll just outline it and then we'll know that's, that's the box we're trying to stay in. But you can think outside the box. You do whatever you want. Clever. <laughs> it just came to me. No, came that was nice. <laughs> Well said. Oh, thanks. I had so much fun when I was in Boston, and I felt like it was my ticket to buy anything swan related the whole time I was there. So, absolutely. I had to get a swan magnet <laughs> while I was at the garden gift shop. And then we went to some like little, I don't know, it was like a, a thrift shop that had cool like Trinkets. vintage stuff yeah. and I found a swan purse y'all I should have brought that swan purse so you can see it it's so fun it's so good it's kind of like um over the top kind of how Bjork's swan dress is that purse is a little bit over the top but every now and then I just get it out and I use it and my kids get so excited I don't think I know what a Bjork a what so Bjork is a a musician and um, she is kind of known for wearing this crazy swan dress oh. to one of the on one of the shows interesting um, so not everybody might get that reference but That's if you're okay. curious you can look up the Bjork swan Google's dress gonna get some Bjork Google searches <laughs> it's pretty it's a pretty epic dress look it up Keenan you Bjork? can see it Bjork swan dress I don't even know how to spell that B -J Bjork, like New York but with a B Bjork that's her name, B-J-O-R-K. She's from Iceland. I'm oh. a big fan. B-J-O-R-K. Oh. 
Isn't that special? Okay, so my swan dress isn't that crazy, but I mean swan purse, but it's it feels like it is because of that because is of Bjork. Funny. She's always had really crazy costumes in her music videos and stuff, so it's not crazy for her. Now you can get this paint really even if you want to. I kind of like it having a little texture, being a little sloppy, but if that's not your thing, then you can be more, more careful or whatever. And also just know that you don't have to do this one. You can do this technique and use another one. And in the, in the lawn yap, I'll probably show you some other things that I do with this technique. Well, I will, I said probably, I will. Perfect. <laughs> have some things planned for that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the lawn yap is just our little extra bonus video that we like to do. Um, so, and it usually happens at the end of the month. It's like a bonus. Yeah. Extra makes it sound like it's not as great, but it's a bonus and bonus makes it sound super great, which is what it is. Yeah, and lawn yap is like a, a South Louisiana sort of Cajun word for that. So if that sounds weird, like what it's the heck really is really hard yap? to spell. <laughs> is it? I don't know. I'm still not sure. I spelled it L A N W, excuse me, L A W N Y O P. Lanyap. That's not correct. No. <laughs> okay, so while that pink's drying, we can get our um, Dr. PH Martin iridescent calligraphy color in silver. And um, last time I knocked it over and spilt it. Um, so. I'm gonna try not to do that this time, but it's okay. Sometimes we spill paint, it's all right. This stuff is so cool, I love it. Can you see that well, should I move? Yeah, it looks good. Is it showing up on camera, the shininess of it? Yeah, if you wanna bring it back down and a little to the right, not by, yeah. All of a sudden that shiny song came in my head. I'm so shiny. I'm so glad that you will sing it. Because <laughs> I was like, I want to sing it. I can't see it. That sounds way too catchy. It's so good. It's too catchy to not sing it every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want to make things shiny, this is, the this is your ticket right here. This is the stuff. Do you want to adjust your apron a little bit your mic is rubbing into your arm oh no it's okay sorry that was probably really loud when i said it oh, no. wasn't oh no that wasn't bad it just sounded like we had a little bit of static and that was confusing me i was like what is happening but these aprons get all twisted when we're moving around yeah they do is that shiny enough i mean i think it needs a little more wait does it get shinier as it dries I don't know. There's a lot of lights on this for me. I know. So it's kind of hard. It looks great. Okay. Well, well, we'll let that work its magic. And then if we need to add more, we can. But, I mean, it's, it can never be too shiny. No. True. I'm putting that cap on there pretty firmly so I don't <laughs> knock it over. Sorry. So it doesn't fall over somehow again? Okay. Yeah. And so w since we got, we're working with a smaller space here, you kind of want to just lay out where your stuff is going to be before you put it on and um, you can trim this down even a little more if you want to take up less room with your words. But I just love the characteristics of this one and kind of learning about them and thinking about um, my connection with the swan and my grandma. And I think this is so perfect because not only is like the swan the thing that I um, connected with her because of the things we did together, but also I feel like it's described her so well. She was very um, creative. She had a lot of grace, which is something I want to cultivate more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, she just, it was really cool. So that's looking like a good spot for my, my swan. I kind of like the idea of the beak going off this space a little bit. So I'm gonna leave that like that and I'm going to grab my swan. I'm gonna put a little yes paste on and we are gonna be close to finish with this. Um, I thought I was going to have to throw this at Keenan, but I got it. Why are you going to throw things at me? <laughs> well, just to get you to that open sounds it. sounds so aggressive. No. Okay, and I have a different knife, I, although I did clean that one. Um, <laughs> I'm just using what I got here, but you can, this is our yes paste, and we're just going to 
put a little bit on and then kind of slide it around. And if you've been doing a few of these, you already know, you don't even need to look up the video. But if you're new here, you just, whoop, whoop. <laughs> this, is, this, is what, this is what you do. <laughs> um, we're just moving it around like we're icing a cake. I feel like that's the best description. I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm a big fan of cake, so just keep using it. <laughs> Do you actually wanna push that swan up? I just stuck it to my... Oh dear. No, no fear, it'll wash right off. That's oh, a good nice. thing about Yes Pace. I'm just, <laughs> I got sticky fingers today. Ah! <laughs> it's usually not this hard. I'm just, <laughs> just extra today. It's that neck, the swan neck just makes it so tricky. It's. You don't want to fold it in half. Okay, that's looking good. That might make you make it a cool texture if it was a crumpled swan. It's not going to be crumpled. It's going to be just fine. But what if it was crumpled? That'd be neat. No, it's not. I'll try it. I'll crumple a swan. I like it right there. But the neat thing about the Yes Paste is you see how you can still move it around while it's wet. It takes a little bit of time to dry. And so you've got some time to change your mind if you want, if you need to. But I think we got it in the right spot. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put my new ways of thinking one in the middle. I'm going to put that one down, then it'll be easier to put the other two around it. And I'm going to try not to put it in the spot that I just got glue all over my thing. <laughs> Last but time I did it on the back. Quick question. Yeah. Will you readjust your apron again? Oh my goodness, it did it again? Yes, it did. It shifted. Okay, sorry. It done shifted. My goodness. Okay. It's a good looking swan. Thanks. I, I think, like the, go ahead. I, sorry, I, I think that iridescent, is it iridescent? The shiny. I mm -hmm. think the shiny gets shinier as it as dries. As it dries? Yeah, it's looking shinier. Looks like it's a big silver dollar. Oops, I was about to, silver dollar, silver moon. Yeah. Silver moon. I think I called it a silver shimmer, shimmer moon. Wow. Shimmer moon? Shimmer. Glimmer, just, just good stuff. It can be whatever you want. Okay, just putting some yes paste on the next little word strip. Yep, just stuck to my finger, that's all right. Perfect. Now you know exactly where it is. <laughs> I didn't lose it, that's which right. that happens a lot to me. You know where it is, where it's going, and where it's been. And I'm just trying to kind of, um, split the space there so there's a little space between this and that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, now we got inner grace. And we are almost done. I, all my fingers are sticky at this point. Yeah. The good thing is, washes up with water, no big deal. Yeah, see how I have a little more room, um, you, time if, to work with that? You bring your head back, there you go. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> there it is, we did it, we did it. We did the swan, oh my goodness. Can you see that shiny? Looks so good. <sighs> okay, well, I hope you enjoy this. I hope that um, you're thinking of a, a kindred spirit that um, you might have a connection with that's different than um, the other ways that we explored. And I love to hear um, about what you made and maybe if you have a story to share um, you can share that in our community we have a Facebook group called let's make art journals that you can um, share those things there um, we also love to see things on Instagram you can tag us at let's go make art or you can use the hashtag let's make art journals to let us um, see what you're making and the story behind it um, <clears throat> yeah that's all I have for you today and we'll see you next time